Alrighty guys, so today I want to do two small mini projects. Now I didn't feel like either of these projects were big enough for an entire build, so I decided to put them both in one video for your viewing convenience. This first one is going to be a modification or an improvement onto my knife vise. I got this idea from the legend Nick Wheeler, and I'm going to incorporate his design into my current knife clamp. The cool thing about this knife clamping system is that you can manipulate your handle and guard in any position that you can think of. In order to use this type of system, you will need a pipe vise that can swivel and rotate, which you just saw me install. I'm going to be modifying the clamp on my current knife vise so that it has a cylindrical section to be clamped into the pipe vise. I am constructing this addition so that it can be bolted on to my current clamp just in case I ever want to go back to the old system. I can see myself down the road having two of these assemblies, one of them with a pipe section like this in the pipe vise and another one in the more rigid original design that I had. So at this point I have my plate welded on to my piece of pipe. It has a half inch hole in it and then I have a nut that I will thread through the pipe and connect the two together. This is the Wilton pipe vise that I purchased for using this clamping assembly. I really like this vise thus far and am pretty impressed with the quality of this vise for its low price. You can see here that I can put my knife clamp in pretty much any position I can think of with this vise. I like being able to put it in the up and down position so I can work on guards. And then I also like how fast I'll be able to rotate this vise around and manipulate the knife handle or guard that I am working on. So we'll move in to the second project now. And the second project is going to be a set of soft jaws for my vise. Not only the Wilton vise that y'all just saw, but the Wilton vise that is connected to my workbench. These are going to be 5 inch jaws and I'm going to make them out of two pieces of aluminum that I had lying around the shop. This is actually some leftover aluminum from my surface grinder build. The first goal here will be to get both of these pieces nice and uniform and then mark out where my ledge will be. This ledge will allow these jaws to sit up on top of the jaws in the current vise. I'll be leaving around a 300 thousandths ledge and I'll be cutting into the jaws about a quarter of an inch. I first thought that I'd be able to remove the bulk of the material either with my grinder or with a hacksaw, but I found quickly that that was not an efficient solution. So I went straight to my mill and busted out the half inch end mill. This was a long, tortuous project and it took me a while just to get the bulk of the material removed from these soft jaws. You can see I have scribed lines on these items and these are not high end precision parts. I'm just trying to get them roughed in at this point and I don't need a huge level of precision with these soft jaws. I found after going back and forth a few times that I liked cutting in one direction particularly so that I was not climb milling. So what I decided to do is use my impact driver to return the end mill to one side after each cut. So I'd make a cut and then I'd return the end mill all the way to the other side. Now, I'm not doing any cutting when I'm using the impact driver. All I'm doing is returning it to the left side of the mill. So that's, that's what I'm doing there, and it, it sped up my process substantially. I use a 7 16 of an inch end mill to plunge cut a slot into the center of these jaws. This slot will be housing a magnet. These are actually the same magnets that I used in my surface grinding attachment magnetic chuck. I make sure to mill that slot deep enough so that the magnets can sit recessed into the jaws. I don't want the steel jaws to be pressing on the magnet in any way. I also want to have a significant amount of space on top of the magnet to fill with epoxy. So this is what they look like after the epoxy has dried. The last step here is to clean up all of the flats gently with the belt grinder and also clean up the flats where the epoxy is and make sure that the inside of the jaws is nice and flat. And then we're gonna test fit it in my vise. Note that this vise has a bunch of wobble in it. I ended up taking the vise apart and tightening everything up so that my travel is, is less wobbly. I've been using this vise since 2012 and I've never done that, so it, it was in desperate need of being tightened back up. 
So this is how the soft jaws turned out. They have a very strong magnetic hold and they can be stored easily in the corner. So I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, hit that like button down below and consider subscribing to the channel. Until next time, I'll catch y'all on the flip side.